Good afternoon, everyone. Today is Friday of the fourth week of Easter. Happy Easter once again as we celebrate the festival of the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So I love this series. I hope you're enjoying it too. And I'm taking it bit by bit for you because I want you to start digesting it, making your own, and start making a framework in your notes, like um, some of these notes, just to connect the dots. So I want to start with the opening procession of Mass now. I'm going to begin with the opening procession, but before I do that, I just want to make a comment about the vestments that priests and deacons wear. Uh, you'll notice that the, the priest or deacon wears a long white garment to, from his neck to his ankles. That's called an alb, A-L-B. It comes from the Latin word albus, which means white. And it represents the baptismal garment that I wore when my mom and dad dressed me. And when the deacon puts it on, it represents that as well. When the altar servers wear their alb, it represents that as well. So the alb re represents the baptismal garment that we wore when we were just being baptized. Did you ever notice the garment that's placed over the casket in church for a funeral mass? That also represents the baptismal garment of that person because we were clothed with immortality. Immortality. We were clothed with eternal life. So because at the moment of baptism, we were given the gift of salvation, right? We were given the gift of eternal life. We were given the gift of immortality in Christ Jesus. So the white garment that the priest or deacon wears first is called an alb. And then he may wear a cincture. The cincture is that rope that goes around the priest, deacon, altar server. And that is a sign of chastity. Did you know that? It's a sign of right order human sexuality. Whether you're single, married, deacon, priest, bishop, it's a sign of chastity, right order human sexuality, according to your proper vocation. And then the priest or deacon wears a stole. It goes around the neck and pretty much down below the knee. A stole. Did you ever see the stole? The stole represents the yoke of Christ. We heard that in the gospel today. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy burden, and I will refresh you. Take upon your shoulders my yoke. So the priest takes the yoke of Christ upon his shoulders and the deacon. Now, they're, they're laid across our bodies differently, where the deacon, it's come, it comes across him, where the priest, it comes straight down. So the stole is also, the stole is a sign of Christ, in one way, of, of authority. Now, authority in a right ordered authority. So a priest wears the stole, or a deacon wears the stole, when he exercises the authority of his holy orders, when he blesses some, when he blesses someone or something, when he administers a sacrament, when he preaches. See, it's Christ who's doing this. So he places upon his shoulder the yoke of Christ. I will refresh you. I will nourish you. So the, the stole is a sign of authority to exercise holy orders. So when you see a priest wear a stole, he's probably going to bless someone, confer a sacrament like confession, baptism, and he's going to preach. He has the authority of Christ to preach in his name and the priest wears a stole, a deacon wears a stole. 
Now, the next thing to go on is the outer garment. The outer garment is called a chasuble. The chasuble. It's a very simple garment. It's like a poncho. Did you ever see the priest wear? There's a hole for him to place his head and then it flows right down. What's the difference between the outer garment of the priest and what's the outer garment of a deacon? Do you know that? Do you know how to tell the difference? Well, the difference is the outer garment of the priest, which is called a chasuble, it flows down like a poncho and it has almost like a curve. The outer garment of a deacon, which is called a dalmatic, is a straight line, almost like a they're wearing a big shirt. So they have sleeves to put in their arm and it goes all the way down past their knees. But it's almost a straight cut. So if you're ever watching, I don't know, a liturgy, uh, whether it's here at St. Mary, whether it's at the Cathedral Basilica of St. Peter and Paul in Philadelphia, the Mother Church of the Archdiocese, or whether it's at St. Peter's Basilica in Rome, Italy, and you're carefully watching the clergy come in, you'll be able to detect who's the priest, and when I say priest, I mean priest or bishop, because there's only three orders or three modalities of holy orders, deacon, priest, bishop. You'll see who's coming in. And the, the, the priest and the bishop wears the same vestment. The chasuble. The deacon wears the dolmatic. Why a dolmatic with a straight cut? Well, because even in biblical times, it was the deacon's always the servant of the liturgy. He serves at the table. He wears a servant's tunic. Isn't that beautiful? So I want you to write that down. Priests and bishops wear chasubles. A deacon wears a dolmatic. The stole of a priest and a bishop goes around his neck down in the front. The stole of a deacon goes across himself. It's always important to know that. So when you see, and you'll see probably a deacon processing with the book of the gospels you know it's a deacon right if you watch the cut of the the vestment a straight cut all the way down like a servant garment to serve a table it's not flowing it's not getting in the way so there are the the vestments that the deacon priest or bishop would wear as we prepare for the holy mysteries the sacred mysteries of the Mass. Now, the, the chasuble represents the charity that the priest and deacon always must conduct themselves because they're clothed in charity. They're clothed in charity. So it's the baptismal garment, the cord of chastity, the stole of authority, and the outer vestment of charity. Okay? I'm not gonna test you on all this, but I want you to know this stuff because when you see these things, it reminds you, because you're a Catholic, aren't you? I would think you should know that, right? And I want to inform you. So as we enter into the sacred liturgy. So finally, the person who is in, the priest who is in the person of Christ, they, disappear, so to speak. From neck to ankle, they are covered. They're covered so that Christ may enter. Remember, it's Christ who celebrates the sacraments, but he uses the priest to stand in his person. But it's Christ who celebrates the sacrament. Remember, this is a foretaste of heaven. Remember, we're entering into 
chirotic time. Remember, we are entering into a timeless moment, a sacred time that has suspended the death and glorious resurrection of Jesus Christ that has been accomplished for our salvation. So Christ is at work and he uses the flesh to bring about salvation. He uses the priest's flesh to bring about these sacred mysteries. Tomorrow we'll continue on by the opening procession. What does the opening procession mean actually? And why do we have it? Thanks everybody for joining me once again on this series of the Sacred Liturgy.